For 1.5, um, I'm not going to use a, an introduction video. Um, the best way to learn to solve problems is to sol solve problems. So, um, but I will kind of follow along with uh, the way it's laid out in the book. Um, so for number four, um, you know, the, this might seem kind of mysterious if we don't know what's going on. There's this thing called D, and it's equal to 300 miles, and uh, this thing called R, which we don't know, we're going to want to know it, and T is equal to 4 hours. Um, so this D is distance, R is rate, and T is time. Um, <clears throat> and the equation that they, or the formula that they tell us to use is d distance equals rate times time, and we know this kind of intuitively. If you're going 30 miles an hour for five hours, you want to know how many miles did you go. Well, 30 miles an hour times five hours is um, 150 miles, um, which isn't very far in five hours. So you probably want to go faster than that if you're going to be driving five hours straight. Um, so. We're going to use this formula and rewrite it as needed to solve for r in this case. So we know that 300 is equal to r, which is not known, times t, which is known. I should have written 4 here. So to solve for r, divide by 4, and r is equal to 75. Um, yes. 75 miles per hour. That's how fast we were going. If we went a total distance of 300 miles in four hours, we must have been going 75 miles per hour. Okay, so that's uh, a, a problem solving strategy called use a formula. If you have a formula that is useful in your situation, then you should use it. Um, number A is another example. P is equal to 46, 46 inches. L is equal to, we don't know. And W is equal to 4 inches. Okay, what formula would apply here? We've got perimeter, that's P. Length is L and width is W. <coughs> There's a formula that perimeter equals 2 times L plus 2 times W, which makes sense. The perimeter of a, a quadrilateral, any quadrilateral, if this is L and this is W, um, then two of these W's plus two of these L's will give you the whole perimeter. So the perimeter is 46, and L is unknown, so just two times L, plus two times W, which is four, then 46 equals two times L plus eight, we'll subtract eight, two L is equal to 38, and divide by two, L is equal to 19. So the length of a rectangle that has a perimeter of 46 and a width of 4 must be 19. Okay, so if we have formulas, that's a great way to solve a problem. If you don't have a formula, it might not be such a great way. <coughs> um, next is one of my favorites is draw a picture. A picture has already been drawn. Um, it's this picture. We've got these three things. To me they look like posters on a wall. Um, and from this edge of this poster to this edge of the, I guess this would be the wall, is X. We also have a distance of the same thing, of X here and here and here so if these are posters on a wall apparently what we've done is space them so that they're uh, they have the same space between them and the space between the posters is the same as the the posters to the edge of the wall um, and each of these posters is two feet wide <coughs> so these these posters are all two feet wide and we want to know um, if the wall is 15 feet long, what you know, we get out our, our ruler, 
our tape measure and measure from here to where we want to put the edge of this poster and then we want to measure the same distance from here here and here this, this four distances need to be the same um, so what is that distance um, well if we take all three of these posters all three of them and multi you know multiply by two it will we'll have a total of six feet okay and then if we were to add on one two three four X's all of those together would need to add up to 15 feet Okay, we just create some kind of truth and then we uh, derive uh, a little bit of you know the truth that we want we do know that all of these posters widths added together with all of these distances needs to be a total of 15 feet so if that's true now we can find out what X is so 4x is equal to, so we'll subtract 6 from both sides. So 15 minus 6 is 9. And so x must be 9 over 4. OK. So you would want to measure 9 fourths of a foot, or 2.25 feet from the edge of the wall to the edge of the poster and then in between the posters and so on. Okay, so that was a good time. I like drawing pictures more when you don't have the picture in front of you. So that's what we're gonna do <coughs> for our next problem, which is number 29. Um, all right, so there's all these words. So this is, I think this section is just really a sneaky way to uh, make you do word problems and to hopefully make you unafraid of them. Uh, you really shouldn't be afraid of word problems. How do we solve them? I think uh, a lot of times we use pictures. So you have a piece of wood that is 72 inches long. Okay, that I can handle a picture of that, 72 inches long. Okay, now you cut the piece of wood into three pieces. Okay, so you're going to cut this thing into three pieces. Okay, so take the saw and and cut those uh, those two cuts there in that piece of wood, uh, and and there you go. Um, the second piece is six inches longer than the first. The third is six inches longer than the second. Draw a diagram and then write and solve an equation to find the lengths. Oh, that sounds really confusing. Um, okay. Well, let's just what I kind of pulled out of there immediately was there's three pieces of wood, um, and they're different lengths. And the second one's longer than the first one. So I'll just draw it so it looks longer. And the third one's even longer than the second one. Okay, it's okay that this does not look to scale. Uh, that's not really what matters. We don't know how long this one is. It's something. It's some length. Okay, so we'll call that length x. <coughs> we know that the length of this, whatever it is, we compare it to this length, it's six inches longer, so we could take x and add six to it, and that would give us the length of this guy here. Now, this third one, we could take, it references the second piece. It says you could take the second piece's length, which is x plus six, and add six to that. It's six inches longer than the second piece. Um, or we could write this as x plus 12. So x and x plus six and x plus 12. We want to know how long each piece is. If we knew what x was, that would be great. Um, we could definitely figure it out from there. We could plug in x and uh, plug in x and plug in x, and we would know how long each piece is. But um, we don't. But what we do know is that all three of these pieces came from this first piece, and this first piece measured 72. So this, this guy could be the x. And this guy could be the x plus 6, perhaps. And this could be the x plus 12, even though it doesn't look like it. Uh, and, and all those together should be 72. Or in an equation, x plus x plus 6 plus x plus 12 should be 72. And so now we'll put these together. we got three x's here. we got 6 plus 12. That's going to be 18. That equals 72. Uh, we'll subtract 18 from both sides. And we'll get 56. 56, uh, 54. Okay, just had to double check that. 
people think you're a math teacher, you must be a human calculator, and that is not true. I get arithmetic stuff wrong all the time. Um, and then divide 54 by 3. And of course, we know 54 is divisible by 3, because 5 plus 4 is 9. 9 is divisible by 3. 54 divided by 3. I am using my calculator. That's 18. Um, so x is 18. x, this piece, is 18 inches long. This is 18. How long must this be? Well, it must be 6 inches longer than that, so it must be 24 inches long. And this one is 6 inches longer than this, even. So it must be, uh, I don't really have a good place to write this, uh, 30 inches long. This one's 30, this one's 24, this one's 18. You stack them all next to each other, they'll be 72 inches. Though they won't quite be because you turned some of this into sawdust and you lost some length. But let's not, let's not be like that. Let's not get all technical. Okay, packing weight. A moving company weighs 20 boxes. Okay, so you got 1, 2, 3, 4, uh, 19, 20 boxes. Great, okay, so that, I, I can visualize that. Um, you have packed. You contain either books or clothes. Okay, I really need to draw a picture for that. Get that. Um, the total weight is 404 pounds. Okay, so now we're, hmm, maybe we should, uh, let's just say we, we split these into, into pieces and, and this group here has books and this clothes, but we don't know which, how many of each there are. We don't know how many, uh, clothes boxes and how many books boxes there are. So, um, you know, let's presents a little bit of a challenge there. The, the total weight is 404 pounds. You know that a box of books weighs 40 pounds and a box of clothes weighs 7 pounds. Hmm, okay. So a box of books is, is heavy. It's 40 pounds. I think it said 40 pounds. So let's just say that this one's 40 pounds and, and this one's 40 pounds. This, these ones over here, the clothes ones are only 7 pounds. Okay, so this is helping me, you know, put together all this information, split it apart, actually. Um, how many boxes, uh, so write yourself an equation to find how many boxes of books and how many boxes of clothes you packed. Okay, so I, I don't know how many boxes of books there are, and I don't know how many boxes of clothes there are, but I knew altogether there's 20 boxes. Um, and then I know that the total weight of them is 404 pounds. So let's, let's say that if I, if I added up all the weight, right? Like the weight of the books plus the weight of the clothes. Uh, let's write really lightly. The books and the clothes. That would be 404 pounds. Okay, well, how would I find the weight of the books? So I need to know how many boxes of books there are. Let's say that there's X boxes of books. So I would take 40 pounds times X boxes, and that would give me the weight of the uh, of the total weight of the books boxes. Um, how many clothes boxes are there? Well, I, don't, yeah, I can say there's Y clothes boxes. There's, 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 there could be X clothes boxes, but that would assume that there's the same number of books boxes and clothes boxes, and we don't know that. But what we do know is that however many books boxes there are, the rest of them are clothes. The rest of them. The rest of what? The rest of the 20 boxes. So 20 boxes minus x will give me the number of clothes boxes. So I could take 7 pounds times whatever this number winds up being. Once I know how many boxes there are of books, I'll know how many boxes there are of clothes. Um, so we can solve this equation for x, x being the number of books boxes. Um, starting to feel like Dr. Seuss. So let's solve for x. 40x plus 7 times 20 is 140 minus 7x equals 404. You can kind of drop the units. Um, 40x minus 7x, that's 33x plus 140 equals 404. 
uh, 33x, uh, subtract 140 from both sides, 140, uh, 404 minus 140, I won't pretend like I'm not going to use my calculator, I am using it, 264, divide by 33 on both sides, x equals uh, 264 divided by 33, 8. What's 8? Eight? 8 is the number of books boxes. <coughs> and how many clothes boxes must there be? Well, there's 8 books boxes. There's 20 boxes altogether. So then the number of clothes boxes, here, let's do this, books, 8. So clothes, it must be that there are 12 of them. Okay, so uh, to be honest, I've, I've had problems like this in my life where I knew pieces of information like this and I was just curious. Uh, in real life, if you had a job packing boxes, you probably would get done packing the boxes, punch out, go home, uh, collect your money, and that's all you would care about it. Uh, but if, if you did have this situation um, present itself, there you go. It's possible to solve. And believe it or not, that's just what I love about math. It's possible to solve things. Um, anyway, um, there you go. I hope that was helpful. Thanks for watching.